Working across multiple media, my studio-led research reactivates and re-embodies Ukrainian cultural memory in response to contemporary concerns surrounding patriarchy, capitalism, and imperialism. Interwoven through notions of selfhood, spirituality, and social responsibility, I embrace epistemologies historically dismissed, investigating how the past is continuously modified to shape our current psyche and conceptions of the future, forever in flux. Taking form as a fragmented allegory, I utilize poetics of precarity and dissonance to expose the fragmentary nature of cultural recall and how traditions exist amidst generational slippage. My frame of reference is subjective, yet expanded through critical re-articulations of reciprocal knowledges and practices. I believe that intercultural dialogue holds emancipatory potential for both humans and the earth to reconnect in mutually beneficial ways. The works presented for Ritual and Lore are part of a larger project titled Our Ancestors Exist as a Reliquary of Whispers. The project's departure point was through archival research into familial and state archives, generational return, oral histories, and material culture analysis. Solastasia is a neologism that describes emotional and existential distress caused by global environmental decay, heightened by capitalism's siloing of the individual. Its synonym is eco-anxiety. Solastasia is a singular malady of a much wider spectrum caused by the proposed current geological epoch, the Anthropocene. I am invested in research surrounding the decolonization of this era as it pins the accelerated decay of the Earth's geology and ecosystems onto all groups of people, while it is not all groups of people that caused it. The inclusion of underacknowledged ways of viewing and being in the world can veer us away from apocalyptic pessimism. The terms diaspora and the Anthropocene are intricately entwined, as they are both systemically created, implemented, and controlled. They both cause affect in the form of anxiety and isolation. Folklore, for me, pertains to the cultural expressions that implicate how our ancestors lived and related to their natural environments, the material culture that circulated, the rituals and belief systems connected to their natural and supernatural worlds. It is best to approach your work with mental clarity and good intentions, something that I bring into my own practice when doing cross-stitching. I was taught by my mother. Comparatively, I consider contemporary psychotherapy techniques such as mindfulness and how similarly these manifest. In Veils of Forgetfulness, I placed dissolving cross-stitch patterns onto waste canvas Echoing capitalist critique, I reposition the importance of practice over product. Solastasic Soliloquy was filmed in Glasgow, the Ukrainian Cultural Center in Regina, and the Bielowieża Forest in Poland, which is the last primal forest in Europe. Traditional dance is utilized as an apparatus to convey and interrogate the ways that folkloric practices cease to exist in their originary formats, when disconnected from their natural environments and removed from congregation. It displays generational slippage as my muscle memory fails and fragments. I chose dance for my soliloquy because it is the cultural expression I have had the most exposure to. It is important to distinguish that this is heritage dance for stage, quite different than how Ukrainian dance would have been traditionally. The audio selected for the work is an orchestral number titled Chardash, which is the first symphonic composition based on folkloric music. Originally a Hungarian call to dance, it was later used by the government as a call to arms. Personally for me, it was a solo number performed by the orchestra that I danced to growing up. It was used as a time filler for us to change out from one regional costume to the next. The structure of the film follows that of a Ukrainian dance concert, beginning with a welcoming korovai and salt, or braided bread, which represents an enduring, hospitable union. In Ukrainian culture, the springtime festival is a time of rebirth. It is filled with fire, jumping over it, using it to light wreaths which are later released into the water, read as divination practice for future love. 
Fire is also symbolic to remembering, as candles are lit for ancestors passed on. In psychoanalysis, fire symbolizes regeneration as well as destruction. The wax wreath that I cast with beeswax, wear, and allow to burn down in solastagic soliloquy refers to the symbolism, while further exposing the futility and dangers of restorative nostalgia, looking only to the past, and the ethical issues with over-romanticizing it. Recalling Sayat Nova's poetry, I meditate. How am I to protect my wax-built castles of love from the devouring heat of your flames? <laughs>